five line animation techniques that you should know how to create in Fusion. Let's get started. So the first line animation technique, a line looping across your screen. For these, we're going to add a background node and connect these to our composition. Here, select the color you want. In this case, we're going to do yellow. We're going to drag a polygon right here. By default, mine shows inverted. So I'm just going to deselect the inversion. Click right here and then holding shift. I'm going to create a line and then go to border width. And then we have our line. If you want, you can make this line flat line or add a rounded edge so that it has a little bit of a rounded edge. By default, you're going to have this X on your screen. And when you click something, it will just create another line. But what we want to do now is select everything, holding control, and then we're going to move our line by making sure that this method or this mode is selected or simply press shift I. We're going to move our line right here. And here on frame zero, I'm going to select our line right here. And then what I'm going to do after positioning the line right here is I'm going to go to center, then go a couple frames forward, let's say 18, and I'm going to move these to the side like that. If we press play, we can see the line going across our screen. If you make these longer, then the line is going to move slower, right? So it's going to take longer to go across the screen. After you have that first line, what you can do is go to this plan, go to polygon, and then selecting these, create a loop by clicking this method right here or this mode. That way it will completely continuously loop. After you have your first line, you can just copy this polygon right here, select the points and go to frame zero. And here we're going to just modify this line length. So that is a little bit delay. If you really want it to be at a different pace, go to the spline tool and then just simply select these keyframes and move them a little bit forward. That way, that second line is going to come back a little bit later. And you can replicate these or duplicate these polygon as many times as you want. And then just simply drag these a little bit lower and then change the length of it by holding shift so that you only move one side and they are kept straight like that. If you want, you can also go to the splice and press F to ease them in and out. But that is really up to you. And that is the technique number one that you should know about. So the technique number two is basically what in After Effects it's called trim paths. So for that, we're going to add our background node right here and our polygon like these. And I'm going to invert these and then I'm going to select a second color. In this case, I'm going to do it like pink ish. I'm going to connect these to our composition again. And now we're just going to draw our polygon right here or line right here and increase the border width. So if you want the line to have a rounded edge, what you have to do is create a bunch of more keyframes right at the beginning and at the end of the animation. Since we're going to animate with the length, when the length is zero, it's going to look like a little dot. So to do this, we're going to create a keyframe here, but we're going to set this to flat there. We're going to move one frame forward and set this to rounded. Now on this frame, you can also start the animation for the length on the previous keyframe. So when the, when it was a flat one here, we're going to create a keyframe for the length and we're going to go to, let's say, frame 22 and increase the length. And then at frame right at the half point, maybe what you can do or at 18, let's say we're going to animate the position and a few frames after at 18 or 28, we're going to bring the position all the way down. And then here we're going to have to create a keyframe for the roundness. Go one frame forward by using the opening bracket key. We're going to create another keyframe. Go back to the last one and change this to flat again. That way it will disappear. If we press play, we have our line that shows up and then disappears. And then what you can do is copy this polygon. If you want to add a bunch of them, simply Make sure that you're in this mode and then position them whatever you want like this. And you can also adjust the keyframe positions for these or like the timing, basically, by holding shift and moving these around with the spline tool. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you want your lines to have a different color, what you want to do is basically hold, copy this background node by pressing Ctrl C, press Ctrl V so it creates an automatic merge node to this one. Then select your color right here. And then what you can do is simply copy these other polygons right here. And then what we're going to do is just move these polygons around our screen and put them somewhere else. So they are not overlapping with the other ones that we had there. Well, the timing is going to be the same, but it's all right. Okay, that was the technique number two that you should know about. 
Now the next thing that you can do is check out swapping.com for some of my free assets for DaVinci Resolve. And you can also check out the split screens pack that I've just recently updated. Now that we're here, we are going to jump into the third method or the third technique, which is using a line to go across your screen. We're going to connect our background node and we're going to use a orange color Then we're going to add a polygon and de invert these in my case. And then all you want to do is drag a point right here, then holding this point, you can adjust the curvature of the line and then do that. And then we can increase the thickness of the line and then we're going to use the trim path animation to make this animation happen you can also make this even longer and make this come across your screen twice if you want to in this case i'm just going to do it once so in this case what we're going to do is just animate the length so i'm going to go to frame let's say 12 go here set the length to zero go a few frames forward and then bring this all the way across your screen and then we're going to do the position right after and then go to 38 and make these go like that. In this case, you can also keep the rounded edges if you like it better like that. Since they are not starting inside our screen, we don't have to use the animation for the flat and rounded edges modes. So then we can press play and we can see that line there. If you want, you can press F on your spline here and then press T and adjust the ease in and out of this line, which is another thing that you really want to get familiar with if you want to create any type of animation. The ease in and out, basically adding a little bit of an extra touch to your animations with these. Because all the, all the other ones are linear animations. No pun intended, actually. <laughs> so that is the third one that you should know about. Now, the fourth technique I really like because, I don't know, it just looks really cool. So for this fourth technique, which I will call these a firework style line animation because it looked like a little firework. So we're going to change the color of these. And if you want, you can make these a gradient. I'm not going to do that in this case, but we're going to add a polygon, the invert these again. And I'm going to start this animation right here at 34. So I'm going to add the first point right here in the middle and I'm going to hold shift. And then I'm going to increase the border width a little bit. And I'm going to create an length animation here, like the trim paths animation. Like that, and I'm going to ease them in and out like that. And actually, I want to make these a little bit more impactful. So I'm going to increase the ease in and out. We have that animation right there. If you get a little bit confused, we can just press two on these background so we can only see that one. Okay, well now that we have that one, we're going to press Ctrl and Spacebar and add a duplicate node. And on this duplicate node, we're going to do, let's say, eight copies. Then we're going to do 360 divided by eight in the angle box. And now we can see that we have that little firework style animation. And if you want to add a little bit of rotation to these, you can add a transform node by pressing Ctrl and Spacebar and make sure that's in the middle. Press two. And then go, let's say frame 34 is where it starts and it ends at 51. So we're going to use those same ones. So I'm going to create an angle keyframe here. And then at the last one, I'm going to also just move this a little bit like that. Let's say negative 90 degrees. And let's take a look at these. Now they're moving in a circular way also. Now, if you want to have a bunch of these and you don't want to copy them and you don't care if they're all in the same color, what you can do is press Ctrl and Spacebar at a transform node then connect this other transform into this one and we're going to connect this here as another merge node we press 2 on this merge node and we move this transform node that we just created we can see how a second one is created and here we can make this also smaller now the timing is not going to change because it's basically using the same one but that is just one thing that you can do if you don't want to create the whole thing again and have to modify the keyframes position and all that all right so we're on to the last one so for this last one we're gonna do is we're gonna add a background node and here i'm actually gonna create a little bit of a gradient okay after the colors are selected i'm gonna drag our polygon right here and i'm gonna press two on the background and then make sure it's inverted and now i'm gonna draw our line and make sure that the border width is like that and if you want, you can adjust the gradient of your background by bringing these two 
points closer, which is basically the starting and the ending point of your gradient. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl and Spacebar and I'm gonna add a waviness node. And then I'm gonna change from vertical to horizontal. And I'm gonna increase the scale. And now you can see that it's already animating because it's the animated version is selected. But if you don't want it to be animating, what you can do is just unselect that. What I'm gonna do is connect these to our composition. And then here, I wanna have a trim path animation on these also. So what I'm gonna do to not create the whole thing from scratch is I'm gonna select the polygon that already has that animation. Press Ctrl C, go to the new one. I'm gonna right click and then paste settings and then paste settings for both of them. And then just adjust the positioning of these. Or maybe let's start this one earlier like that. And we have that there. So I, I so we had the little dot right there so I created those keyframes that I showed you earlier with the flat and rounded edges mode. We have that zigzag line there. We're going to add a transform node here and now we can rotate these whatever however we want and then just move this around and then use this technique here that I just showed you by just holding control C and copying that transform node and then connecting the zigzag to this one and then here and to this one. Now this is an extra tip that I'm going to show you which works if you're on 18.5 and on I think which is using the multi-merge node. So we're going to press Ctrl spacebar and add a multi-merge. What this does is that allows you to create a bunch of more layers without having to create a ton of merge nodes. And this works great for something like this. So I'm gonna connect this second transform node here and we're already gonna see this transform node right here. Press play so that we can see where it is. And then I'm gonna move this there and I can also create another copy of these, connect the same composition there. And then again on the multi-merge, now we can see this other one here. And here you can rename this zigzag one, zigzag two. And if you don't want one of them, you can just simply make them disappear. Let me just move these first so that we can see where they are. And then adjust this size or anything. And also you have different layer controls right here that you can use to modify your lines here or any element if you don't want to adjust these transform now right here. So yeah, those are five line animation techniques that you should know about and that now you know. If you want to download the project files from this video, make sure to check out the Swabby Club, which is the monthly membership that gives you access to project files from videos like this one and a bunch of other ones. So that is it for this video. Come back tomorrow for more.